Which faction has the worst army rule? Hello and welcome to Incursion Tactics. My name's Luke and this week I will be mostly talking about army rules. And what better way to do it than with a tier list? After hours of painstaking research and discussion with some of the world's top players, I've created the perfect ranking system by which we can view the haves and the have-nots in terms of army rules. So stick with me to see where your faction ends up. I think I'm going to get a lot of flack for the last one. First up, we've got Admet. Now, they've had a bit of a glow up in terms of army rule, and they went from really, really bad to significantly better, to the point where I would put them probably about here. I don't think that the Admet rules are inherently broken. They just are really, really good. You've got the Protector Imperative giving you benefits to your shooting attacks, but also making it so that you're a little bit tougher to hit if things go badly. And the Conqueror Imperative is giving some really good melee buffs. And what I love about this is the flexibility. You can select what you have. So it suits multiple play styles. You've got the ability to go all out shooting or all out combat. Or if you've got a more mixed force, you can flex what you're going to be using and when. And you're not stuck to just one thing. If the situation calls for something different, you can switch it up. And that's what puts it in the A tier of rules. You're never going to be unhappy about having the benefits that are being thrown out. Next up, we have Necrons. I'm going to put these in the A tier. The ability to get models back is just good. It can sway what objectives you're holding in the command phase. It has the ability to undo your opponent's shooting. If you think I'm going to chip away at a unit over a few turns, this just stops that. The ability to get models back is such a pain in the backside. Knock a wound off a destroyer and think, okay, I'll get it next turn. Well, it's going to go back to full health and undo everything you've done. And that can be very, very frustrating, very, very powerful. In a weird way, it feels like you're adding units to your army. If they heal back consistently over the course of a game, it could equate to almost having another unit exist in the game, which is very powerful. The reason why I don't think this is ahead of Admech or in S tier range is because the opponent does have a level of agency that can disrupt this plan. So if they're smart, they can focus fire and wipe units out entirely to prevent you accessing this rule. And so whilst it's really strong, there is some play around it. Next up, we have Death Guard. I think this is a weird one with the army rule because you've got contagion range giving the minus one toughness, but that is not the whole story with Death Guard. It's just step one in the layering of debuffs and the detachment rule gives you more debuffs depending on contagion range, further exacerbated by all of the awesome things you can do with different units layering on different effects. And so in isolation, I think the minus one toughness thing that Death Guard do is fine. If we're looking at the army rule on its own, then it's probably C tier. It's okay. Okay, there'll be some games where the minus one toughness is basically non-existent, but the contagion rule and the contagion range being something that is a big part of the synergy with the rest of your detachment abilities and so on, you have to recognize that and not just look at it as the minus one toughness element of the army rule doesn't always come up. So it's a bad army rule. It's a bit more complex than that. So I think B is a perfectly reasonable rating to reflect that with the Death Guard. There's a lot more going on than just that first bit about contagion ranges and the minus one toughness. And you can create game states and combats where they're just completely one-sided as a result. And that's reflected in the rating here because without the contagion rule in the army rule, then half the other bits of the army wouldn't work. It's a very solid army rule and you can create some really strong setups with it. Next up is Custodies, and I think they've had a bit of a roller coaster in terms of army rules and updates, and their army rule is just perfectly fine. I think it offers a lot of good stuff. I don't think it's particularly oppressive. I don't think it's particularly weak. What's nice about it is you can choose on a unit by unit basis, and that's the thing that for me puts it into the B tier range. I think it would just be C if you had your whole army affected by the stance that you choose. Compared to the Abmech ability, for example, the buffs that you get are really strong, which pushes it into that really strong category. Compared to Custodes, sustained and lethal hits in combat, they're not as powerful as the extra buffs Admech are getting, but you can switch it out unit by unit, so you can customise the special buff you've got in the moment and in response to things which could be enough to swing combats that you might otherwise have lost if you were locked into sustained at the top of the battle round when all of a sudden actually now I need lethal. That ability to switch it up is what pushes it into that B category for me. Dark Angels. Thinking about Space Marines in general, got Space Marines after them on the list and I'm going to move Death Watch to there as well. I think it makes sense to discuss these all in one go. 
in the most part for space marines, including Blood Angels and Black Templars, which aren't on here, Space Wolves as well. Oath of Moment is really the main army rule. And with Death Watch and Dark Angels, you've got different elements. You've got the access to Ravenwing and Deathwing, which unlocks other elements of the Dark Angels army. And the same with Death Watch, there are some rules around the different unit types and kill teams, etc. But for all intents and purposes, and the treat them the same the other space marine factions that i mentioned don't have any other real additional elements directly linked to the army rule or additional army rules so that's why they're not here just in case of simplicity so just thinking about oath of moment and at the end of the day the re-rolls that you can then pick every turn is just really strong and it ticks the box with a punchy impact for army rule and one that gives you flexibility and is more limited in how your opponent can play around it if they're presenting targets to you then you get to choose which target you can hold for the moment. It's just really strong. Three rolls to hit, both shooting or melee, are never not good. So there's not really much more to add. Thousand Suns is an interesting one. The Cabal points are really strong and the effects they can give you are really flexible. We've all been there with Weaver of Fates keeping Magnus alive when it really shouldn't and that's very annoying. And so these just little bonuses can really create some very frustrating moments and game states that you don't expect nothing in isolation is overly powerful and it keeps it beyond that s tier of strong abilities in my view but a really strong set of abilities that you can pick and choose make this a solid a tier army rule Astra Militarum next and the army rules I think they're on the better side of B tier these are strong effects and I think what each individual order is is good they're not so insane that on their own they're breaking a game in half but they're giving you an extra buff on all of your units and the flexibility is really strong fact the more that i think about it i think they're probably just the lower end of a tier it's the flexibility again for me that you've got these buffs that you can have on your units and they allow you to be choosing what you want when you need it whether it's a little bit of extra movement or i need to actually fix bayonets get strack and stuck into a fight that's really nice that you've got that flexibility a little bit of everything which is really on brown with the jack of all trades approach to guard fighting if you want to have a fairly diverse force you can and the orders really help lean into that do require a bit of setup with positioning and vox casters that sort of thing but once you get your head around that you can really use the orders to leverage some powerful plays turn effect is very strong the ability to add one to your hit rolls and one to your wound rolls is very powerful and i think it's better than the space marine effect because you can do it to both the rolls and there's a lot of power in the judgment tokens where it's been lackluster in the past it's not a challenge to get the judgment tokens that you need to function and i think that really allows the votan army to set itself apart and have these really strong powerful plays where you can just annihilate units quite comfortably with the different units you've got access to as an army rule it's really strong it feeds into what the army wants to do and it's just very solid what pips it for me is that throughout the course of the battle you can get the judgment tokens quite consistently and with oath of moment just compared to the space marine ones next to it you don't have the opportunity to apply that same buff to multiple different targets oath of moment's really strong but the judgment tokens you can spread that out to multiple different targets and really get a nice spread of benefits across the turns and get multiple bonuses whereas those at the moment you zero on a target wipe out that target and then that's it world eaters i'm hesitant to do it but i'm putting world eaters in c i think the effects that they get are really strong but you have to make it work to get over some of the randomness the i rolled to get anger on back on turn one and he's not even moved out of his deployment zone yet that was awkward and then other turns where you just don't roll it and so obviously there's ways to circumvent that and you can manipulate the dice a little bit but ultimately any ability that you can just kind of crap out it creates a bit of a weakness in that obviously the effects are really strong and you can have polarizing games but that's the problem for me fundamentally as an army rule as a whole you might have games where you feel like you just don't have an army rule and that's not great i think the randomness with world eaters is it's not as polarizing as other factions abilities and that puts it for me just about in c tier whereas other factions like i'm going to skip and talk about them now gsc for example this gets the award for in my view the worst army rules in the game because if you fail all your roles to get 
the units back then you straight up don't have an army rule other games you'll pass them all and you'll get loads of units back and you'll feel like you're on top of the world but did you win because you played well no you won because your army rule popped off and it was insane neither one of those create a particularly interesting gaming experience also you might have games where you get all your units back but you can't place all of the blips down because your opponent's all over the board and so again you're army rule becomes non-existent and the difference between world eaters and gsc for me is as the opponent i have no play or ability to shut off the world eaters rule if they roll well and get the effects that they want i can't stop that i can maybe avoid units that i want to avoid but it's a lot harder for me to mitigate them getting a good roll and using those abilities versus gsc where i can move forward screen push their blips back into meaningless parts of the board or move on to a blip once the blip's been placed and deny them getting units on top of the fact that they might just not get units in the first place so that's why world eaters is just a little bit ahead of something like gsc in terms of army rule just want to take a little break to remind you that i have members content and in this week's members video i'm going to be discussing some of the top picks from this tier list and ways in which you can understand and use the learnings for these army rules to have better games against these opponents so if you're enjoying this content consider joining the incursion today and you'll get access to an additional video every week as well as access to the shared discord i have with epic flail so if you want to join this ever-growing awesome community don't delay join the incursion today Next up is Chaos Space Marines. This goes firmly in A tier, but the back end of A tier. Lethal and sustained hits are nice. They're very similar to Custodes, but the reason this gets a bit of a bump up is because it's shooting and combat as well. So just some really solid effects, not quite as powerful as the other buffs that are open to you and a bit less flexibility than some of the other stuff in A tier, but more flexibility and powerful than the stuff in B. Knights, I'm just not excited about these special rules. They're fine. They're perfectly reasonable. You get some bonuses with the Bondsman ability. You can get some extra CP with the chivalric stuff, but they just don't excite me. The abilities for you to include the free blades and super heavy rules, getting over terrain and things like that, they're fine, but they don't really feel like army rules to me, even though they are lumped in that category they allow you to just play the game a little bit rather than actually being penalized they're concessions that have been made to make the army function versus actually offering anything powerful or useful so focusing more on the bondsman abilities and code chivalry they're not terrible but they're not particularly exciting they go above world eaters for me because the randomness i can't abide the randomness basically for world eaters even though there's definitely more powerful stuff in there with world eaters yeah, you could get Angron back. That's more powerful than a lot of what the night stuff has going on, but you also could just not get Angron back. This is more like it. Grey Knights. This goes S tier. Games are won and lost in movement phase, and for Iron Nexus being a bit trickier to score points in general now, you can just jump around the board and be wherever you need to be. That is a fantastic ability, it's super strong, and it's always going to be in play. You have to be thinking, where are the Grey Knights going to be next turn? And the simple answer is, wherever the heck they want. If you've not been able to screen out the board, they can just go wherever their tactical objective cards need them to go. And it's fantastic. It's fluffy, it works with what the Grey Knights want to do, and it's just strong. Drakari next, and they sit at the forefront of A tier for me. The ability to improve the likelihood that you'll get into combat, coupled with their fast-moving units and the buffs to AP, basically the power from pain mechanic is really strong. Where it's high up on the power level for me is the ability to get to where you need to be. It might not be Oath of Moment, Judgment Tokens, they offer a lot of raw power and ability to kill stuff, which is very important, but so does the Army Rule for Drakari, allowing you to have a stronger likelihood to get the charge with the re-roll on advance and charges on top of the fact that you can stack the oath of moment style effect with the re-rolls and more really strong re-rolls are never not good and you've also got the ability to get to where you need to be so those two things combined is a really powerful ability you can save up your power from pain points to use them when you need to use them tau rightly or wrongly sticking in b it's very powerful it's just a bit of a pain to set up it seems needlessly complicated there's a lot of words to the army rule the spotting and guiding and what have you but at the end of the day it's just very useful improving your ballistic skill and getting ignores cover it does everything the towel want to do and that's great i would put it a bit higher but it's a bit one-dimensional compared to some of the other abilities with the exception of necrons necrons is probably a bit too one-dimensional should probably be at the top end of b yeah, I'm feeling that actually now looking at this, because it's very good. Reanimating is very annoying, but it's not as overtly powerful as all the rest of these things. I'm thinking more like that. 
yeah, that feels better. The Necron and the Tau effects, they're very strong, but they are one dimensional. Necrons, you're healing, that's great, but you're not adding anything more to that compared to directly above it, Drakari, getting the rerolls and you're getting the movement. It's really solid. There's more than one thing going on there. And that's the same with Tau. Next up is Tyranids. Firmly in the get in the bin category. It is an awful army rule. Massively polarizing, like the GSC army rule. You will have situations where you battle shot multiple units, you zero your opponent on primary, and you are loving life. Other times, they will pass all their battle shocks and your army rule does nothing. You have no control, no agency. Maybe you can make some of the additional debuffs with positioning of certain units. Outside of that, that's it. The games that you lose hard against Tyranids will probably be the ones where you got the raw end of the battle shock. And the games where you smash them, they don't have an army rule. Dreadful design. Next up is Eldari. And this is really solid. I think this is just ever so slightly. This used to be S tier and it was fantastic. Now it's just the top end of A tier for me. And the reason being is you just don't quite have enough dice to really have the consistency with games to break that. If you roll five ones, you're going to be struggling. And it's really good when you get the dice rolls that you want. You've got that floor which keeps this in check compared to what it used to be really strong ability probably should be s tier but compare that to miracle dice and the amount of miracle dice you can get in a game that changes it drastically and the reason why i don't place this just above gray knights is that you will still have games where you just don't hit the amount that you need however this is really close to just being broken this army rule is very good and you just guarantee charges oh i need to charge this unit i guarantee that charge oh i need to do six wounds to kill that tank oh i've done six wounds to kill that tank it's insane and the eldari one has a similar vibe going on but there's that distinction i could easily put eldar here it's of a similar level but you get less dice less manipulation so it's just not as good as the sisters one but you could make an argument for putting it bottom of s top of a I think Demons is really good. They've had a bit of a glow up with the Shadow of Chaos and it's on this better side of Just Right. I think, I don't think it's A tier. I don't think it's quite there. I think it's really strong, the ability to have the close up deep strikes, but your opponent still has a lot of agency in how they combat that. They can still screen you out even with a six inch deep strike. So it's good as better than what it was, but it's still something that your opponent has a lot of agency or can have a strong amount of agency to prevent you from getting where you need to be. And then the battle shock and healing stuff just doesn't come up that often enough to really be that relevant in games. Like a lot of the time, it just won't matter. Chaos Knights is just a bit weak. I don't really know what more to say about it. They're okay, they're strong, they have some reasonable effects, but on the whole, compared to a lot of the other armies, they just don't excite me. And I think that there's a lot of other better effects. They just sit there in this position of, again, the super heavy elements, I don't really care for much. Like the battle shock stuff's okay and you have ways of layering on effects but again you're in the territory of sometimes you just won't have an army rule it's just not very good at least there's additional effects if they fail battle shock or if they become battle shocked so it's not just your battle shock this is an extra layer to it which just scrapes it into the c category of it's okay like it's perfectly fine but you've really got to make it work Last but not least orcs i'm going to get on my soapbox now and put orcs right into s tier they have the best army rule in the game. Nope, not really. It's more like D. This really upsets me with Orcs because they have what appears to be a really solid army rule. Plus one attack on the war, advance and charge, fight plus invan save. That's awesome. They are all solid effects. They are doing what the Orc army wants to do and getting stuck in, giving a real bonus. But the reality is your opponent baits something out you want to make a charge but the army doesn't have any other access to advance and charge but you pop in the war to make that charge there's an objective there and you want to get the points but the rest of your army might be out of position so do you want to use your army rule for that one turn just to get a few points maybe or your opponent just goes okay i'm not going to present any reasonable targets to you until maybe turn three turn four if you want to spend your war just trying to get to me and getting a couple of piecemeal fights going i'll then wait for the meaningful stuff to not have an invulnerable save anymore and then i'll come out and deliver a counter punch and you don't have your army rule benefits anymore ultimately the rule looks good on paper but most of the time it's very easily played around and you end up in these situations where oh you just don't have an army rule and so it's awful i think there's a lot of changes they can make to make it better and pinning the advance and charge on that one shot 
one go turn is really crippling because clever players will put stuff in the way, deny your charges and prevent you getting an effective use out of the plus one attack on assaults that I'm going to win anyway. I'm not really getting the benefit of the plus one attack or the in one save and then the wild benefit goes away and then don't get me started on if you go second. If you go first, you get two turns of war. If you go second, you only get it in your turn. You don't even get it for a full battle round. It's awful. It's such a badly designed rule. People, I think, are tricked into thinking it's a good army rule, and it's just not, because it promises so much, but in some games, it just delivers nothing. It needs to get in the bin. I think an overhaul is needed for the war. Super frustrating when you look at other armies and they have the ability to get advance and charge either as a stratagem, so like demons can do it for a stratagem, gene stealer cults can do it for a stratagem. That would be an amazing orc stratagem because sometimes you're only charging with one thing, but you have to go all or nothing. It's very orky, but tactically it's not very sound, sadly. So there we have it. That is my tier list. A bit of a change of pace to something different. If you missed my last video last week, then I did a video on primary, which you can check out here. If you enjoyed this video, you want to see more content like this, and if I've done your army a disservice, let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Keep rolling those dice and stay tuned for more.